Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. Um, are you excited? I'm excited. Today, I'm going to share with you some Hall of Fame kind of candles. I think I'm going to label it as Legacy Edition because I did do another one of these for the holiday season last year and I called it Legacy Edition. These are the candles that I would not want to do without during the holiday season. And it doesn't matter that they are not new and flashy anymore, that they're not getting a whole lot of buzz. These are the ones that if I had my druthers and I didn't feel pressure to keep buying and trying all of the new things, not only for my channel, but just to see, you know, um, one can't have a closed cannon, you know, um, I would just burn these candles. These would be my seasonal candles. So I did one for the holiday season last year and I, I meant to do one for the summer season this year um, because one by one, I'm just gonna start recording these. Um, Summer is actually, I've discovered my favorite home fragrance season, which is kind of bizarre. And then I was thinking about it today, and I actually think that the winter period is my second favorite fragrance, home fragrance season. And by winter, I mean like January through March. That is, so I guess like the off seasons for me are just really special. And I don't know all the reasons why, it's kind of a surprise to me too because they're not the seasons that you would think of as like prime time and home fragrance. Those are my favorite seasons. So wait for, stay tuned for that winter hall of fame probably in January. Um, as, as much as fall is prime time for home fragrance, I actually kind of struggle with the fall season. When I started thinking about it, I'm like, I just don't, I don't know that I love the fall season. I, maybe it's just that the candles are somewhat, the fragrance profiles are somewhat cliched. Like you just expect like pumpkin spice and apples or something like that. And it starts getting redundant. Like, I don't know. Um, but while it is, like I said, prime time for most candle companies and for most candle burners, um, and don't get me wrong, I love my seasonal fall candles. Um, it's not my season. It's not my season. And so when I discussed doing a Hall of Fame or Legacy Edition video for the fall season, I was like, I don't really know that there are going to be any candles, like maybe three or four. Like, I don't know. But then when I started thinking about it, like, I actually, there are a lot of candles here that I really worship and adore. Um, and I got it up to 10, which is pretty impressive. I have 10 candles and then I have like four honorable mentions too. So actually I have a good deal of candles here. Um, when it gets to the pumpkins, I'm not gonna lie to you, starts getting a little bit redundant. So especially in the case of two of them that really should be collapsed into one, I think. Um, so 10 was a very nice round number, but if I needed to include another one in the Hall of Fame, I could definitely drop one of those more redundant ones. Um, but it goes to show you that I really love this fragrance. One is kind of a version of the other. Um, I am going to, and by the way, that uh, that's how I'm gonna handle these Legacy Hall of Fame videos going forward. I'm not gonna re-record them every single season. If my Hall of Fame has stayed intact from last year, I'm not gonna bother re-recording. I'm just gonna re-record if, if there is a new inclusion into the Hall of Fame, you know what I mean? Then I will re-record and or if it's been like a couple years, I'll probably like re-record too, just to remind everyone of my favorite candles. Um, there are some obvious ones here that are probably, they would probably be in anyone's 10, top 10 Hall of Fame for fall. And there are some here that like, I would be floored if anyone has it in their top 10. So there are some obscure ones for sure. And there are some categories here that are not, are not represented, frankly. And we'll talk about that at the end. At the end, I'll talk to you about where I think the holes are in this lineup um, and why, why they're not included here. 
Um, in the case of at least one category, it's just because I'm still in the testing phase. I'm still kind of looking for that perfect candle that fits that category. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that at the end. So I am going to, th these are in a very particular order and I'm not even gonna try to do like number one to number 10 weighted for like favorite status or whatever. I'm going to make this, the order of this is actually seasonal and chronological. So I'm gonna start out with what I think are my favorite like very early fall candles, early September, and then just kind of go chronologically. So September into October, deep October and then November I still consider to be fall as well at least up to Thanksgiving and then Thanksgiving for me I turn the corner usually but it, it's I burn all the way up to Thanksgiving day I'm one of those kind of people Black Friday it's time for holiday candles you know what I mean I am not gonna burn holiday candles before that point so Black Friday is kind of my cutoff point and that's when I switch over to holiday not winter. So we'll talk about that distinction when I film the Hall of Fame winter collection. So like I said, these are all gonna be chronological, not by brand or not by, um, you know, favorite status or something like that, you know, leading up to number one, the best or something like that. Um, it was interesting to me though, that the candle companies are kind of bunched together which shows that like, at least for my money, this candle company does really great at this sub season, you know, or this scent profile. And then there's just like a ton of one company, you know? All right, no more further ado. Let me grab some coffee. Let's talk about my absolute favorites. So we're gonna start out with some fairly obscure ones for probably some of you. And we're gonna start out with one that is gonna be on no one's fall list because it's not really a fall candle, <laughs> but I think it is. So the number one or the very first like blush of September kind of candle for me is this one right here, Cherry Tree from Kringle. And I know you're probably like, I hope, I hope we don't turn the video off at this point and be like, she's obviously incompetent. I'm out, I'm off the bus. <laughs> walk with me, walk with me. <laughs> um, so this candle actually, they're trying to discontinue this candle and I don't know why, because I just think it's one of, one of it's, it's obviously one of my favorite candles from Kringle. Um, and it was obviously marketed for the spring. It's got this beautiful cherry blossom label on it, but upon burning it, and even to some extent, just smelling it in the jar, this does not smell like a spring candle to me. I've actually reviewed, I think I've reviewed, I've reviewed most of these candles. I'll tell you if I haven't, but if you want an in-depth review on any of these, you can probably go back. I have playlists, they're grouped by candle companies so that it's easier for you to look. But I do have an in-depth review on this and I've talked about it a great deal on this channel. So if you've been with me for any amount of time, you kind of know about Cherry Tree. Cherry Tree smells to me, I, I, I don't disbelieve the notes. I mean, the notes have a lot to do with like, wood and blossoms and cherry and a whole lot of other things like that that are just very obvious. Like that's exactly what you would expect would be in a candle called cherry tree. And somehow the sum of its, it, it's more than the sum of its parts. It's one of those candles that like, if all of those elements went into it, it's not what's coming out on the other side. It's just not like a chemical, like, reaction or something, it has become something different. And for me, this candle, oh my gosh, the dominant note is honey, honey. And it's not, it's not a particularly floral candle and it's definitely not like a light botanical authentic floral that you would associate with like a spring candle. This is much more of a bassy, heavy kind of candle. And by heavy, I mean heavy in the way that honey is heavy. It's like dripping, you know, and it's rich and it's deep. And 
There is, I think, wood and musk in this, along with that amazing honeyed, like a fruity honey though. It's a fruity honey smell. And when it's burned long, it's just like straight up dripping honey and fruit. Like it could almost be an apricot, frankly, or a pear, something like that. And because of the musk in the wood, it actually starts giving off a little bit of a liqueur or wine-like quality, kind of boozy, without it actually being a true boozy note. It contributes to the depth and the richness of it. I've always said to me, this seems like a like an almost a port candle or a sherry or some sort of aperitif, some sort of honeyed dinner kind of, you know, after dinner beverage. Port, sherry, brandy, brandy. Because it's kind of one of those fr deep fruity, like stone fruit kind of honeyed, ambered, deep, dark beverage kind of, you know, smells, feels. Oh, it's a deep evening kind of candle, you know? And I don't know what it is about the fall season, but I just think about boozy candles. <laughs> I don't know why. I just, I really want those deep, dark, like a whiskey, a bourbon, a rum, uh, just something in there and brandy, port, sherry. I actually think that that category, especially the brandy, port, sherry, is a category that's somewhat underrepresented in home fragrance. And I just think it's glorious, especially in a cool weather kind of season. So for me, cherry tree, especially with the dripping honey and the fruit forward, for me, it's an early September candle when things actually, now with global warming, things are not getting cool at that point. So maybe you wanna do it late September. Um, but it's definitely like kind of one of those apple and honey kind of candles. Um, and I've always said this, but like Rosh Hashanah um, for the Jews is usually sometime in September or early October. And the big food for Rosh Hashanah is honey and apples. And apples are in season here in the United States. And there is just something glorious about honey in the fall season. And so for me, it's just one of those perfect, it just seems to be like, like reinforced and reiterated all of these different fragrance profiles coming together perfectly for this early season. So like I said, will not be on anyone's fall candle um, hall of fame top 10. And, um, and I can understand that and I receive that. I know that many of you probably think I'm like insane, but this is one of those candles. I don't, I mean, it's being discontinued. So I don't know that it was very successful and it may just be because it didn't smell the way that people wanted it to smell. They wanted a cherry tree candle that smelled like a cherry tree that could be burned in early spring, for instance. And this is just not that at all. But honestly, if this candle were marketed in a different way, even with bogus notes, <laughs> I just think so many people would love and adore it. It's fantastic. And the strength and throw on this is also fantastic. Despite the 100% soy, it's really, really good. Would it be better with paraffin? Probably, but it's still good in 100% soy, which is impressive given that it's a little bit of a deeper, richer fragrance, which traditionally soy doesn't quite pick up on. It's fantastic, especially when you burn it long and you can with, that is one of the positive things about 100% soy, you can burn it very long. Wait for that honey, wait for that honey. All right, we're gonna stay with Kringle and a similar candle, at least in some respects. This is Hallowed Ground right here. And this was a Halloween release last year. And I thought it was a sleeper. I thought it was the best candle in the bunch. And you know how like Kringle does the Halloween where they've got like 17 collections and like eight candles in each and you know, that kind of thing. So this was in their three wick collection and they had these kind of semi-translucent um, jars with, you know, these black 
um, cut out silhouettes. Um, as I've always said, I do not love the cheapness of this printing that only goes so far and then you can see the white wax underneath it. I just think it gives a cheapness there, but we don't need to dwell on it. Um, so obviously like a kind of a graveyard kind of motif there for hallowed ground. And I think that's where they were going with the concept of hallowed ground. But as I'll say in a second, I really think that it could very easily be marketed in a less spooky way and you could keep the name hallowed ground. So the notes on this one are saffron, smoky cedarwood accord, honey, sage, sandalwood, musk, vanilla, patchouli, and tonka. I mean, I'm there for all of that. All of that is in here. There's no bait and switch. It doesn't smell different than that. This is an incredible candle. Oh, and this is even more overtly honey than even cherry tree is. And of course, honey is listed as a dominant note. Oh gosh, this is gorgeous. The other Halloween candle from Kringle that is extremely honey forward is Nevermore actually. And Nevermore, that's the Edgar Allan Poe with the black raven on the front. Um, Edgar Allan Poe candle Nevermore is extremely honey forward. It's supposed to be honey chai, but for my money, the chai does not come through very much. So it's just pretty much a straight up honey candle. For me, it was a little sweet. But I love this candle because it has just as strong a honey smell, but wait, because there's so much more. This candle has layers, it has richness, it has dynamism. It's just fantastic. The high and top notes are that honey and it kind of sucks you in and then it just transforms to like the saffron and the sage and a little bit of herbalness, but don't be like, sh don't be like weirded out if you're not an herbal person. I, it's not, it doesn't come across as an herbal candle. Again, it's that sweet honey. Oh, and then it becomes a little bit darker in the saffron and sage, and then grounded with all of those amazing kind of like woody, musky, tonka notes. Oh, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous candle. Um, and he was an amazing performer as well. This is like one of their three wicks. Amazing. I mean, I think in the open concept, I was getting it up to a 7.5 at least. Um, so it was, it performed very, very well, even for 100% soy. Um, it's a little bit, well, let me think. No, they're about the same. They're both kind of mid to low level, base level fragrances. They're about there. This one does have a lot of bright honey on top though, a lot. Um, like it almost pushes up into the upper range. It's that like high up there. Oh my gosh, but it's got such a range as a candle. It's just, I'm sorry. I know that I'm like repeating myself, but I love, I love this candle so much. I said it was the best new candle for Kringle lat that year. Um, and like I said, did not get the attention that it should have gotten. I, I think as it turns out, like the brand ambassadors didn't get the three wicks or something, you know, to like talk about. And then they just kind of selectively bought them, but it just didn't get any kind of buzz. And it should have, it should have. <laughs> I have been very vocal, of course, I have a like in-depth review on this. I have been very vocal about this candle coming out in the regular line for the fall time. Um, I think, and it, it's 100% soy, so you know it would go in one of these, although now with the country line being 100% soy, you could make it a country candle too. I actually think it would be beautiful as a country candle. Um, and. Uh, with a, a beautiful color. And again, I would do a honeyed color, you know? And I think you can keep the motif of hallowed ground, but just make it more of a like, um, like a like a New England harvest motif. You could do like, you know, seas of shining, not seas, but like the 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 grain, you know? Like in the, in the anthem, the, the grain. Um, the grain at harvest time with that golden color, you know, hallowed ground in more of a like Americana 
agricultural kind of way, or you could go the direction of like an old New England church. That's a very Kringle motif too. Like one of those old New England churches with like a very golden early fall kind of scene. Um, I just think that you could definitely make this a mainline candle. It's, there's nothing spooky about it really at all. Um, and that way you could get a lot more viewers and a lot more viewers, a lot more consumers are gonna buy the candle too. Cause there's some people that just don't do the Halloween season, don't love that kind of Halloween symbolism in their home. And there's no reason why hallowed ground should be a spooky kind of candle or even name. Um, so yeah, I love this candle. I really do. It's a shame that it didn't come back this year. Um, yeah, this is a baby sister or a little sister scent to my next candle, which is also Kringle and it is Sanctuary. Guys, this is also incredible. And now we're getting deeper into September, even or maybe early October. Look at that stunning label with the stunning wax. Oh my gosh. So this was a new release. This was basically the last season of the um, country candles being paraffin, 100% paraffin. And then they just switched overnight to 100% soy. So this was kind of the very last of it um, in the fall season. I want to say maybe two years ago this came out as a... Um, a fall release candle and it was a huge hit. It really was. And I think that was a surprise to everyone, including maybe Kringle, is that it outperformed and was more successful than many of the gourmands in those two collections. Um, everybody wanted Sanctuary. Even Melanie from Mr. Kong's mom loved Sanctuary. And I don't think it's her wheelhouse. I don't think that's what she does. But Sanctuary was just a standout. And I don't have the notes on the bottom, but this is, again, a very sweet, spicy, funky, herbal kind of candle. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. A lot of vetiver but it's got this very high, sweet, almost honeyed kind of smell, but it's not quite as overtly honey, certainly as hallowed ground, but even as cherry tree. But it still has this very strong, warm, amber-like feel to it. But then it's got this amazing, deep muskiness on the bottom with all of these rich, funky herbs in between, like vetiver and clove. Oh, it's just a gorgeous fall conceptual and it performed like amazingly. Like I, I think this one in the open concept was an eight. Two wicks, 100% paraffin. This is still a 100% paraffin. Um, I think I have a couple of them left and I'll probably never burn them because it hasn't come back since then. And frankly, I don't think this is a fragrance that is gonna translate in 100% soy. I think that's part of the reason why it probably has not come out as a reformulation in soy. There are certain fragrances that you can kind of get away with in 100% soy. They, they, <laughs> they're of a specific kind of quality. It seems to me that soy picks up on higher notes and fruitier notes and sweeter notes a little bit better than the basier notes, which is why a lot of paraffin candles smell more rich, for instance, and more bassy than a lot of 100% soy candles. And unfortunately, this one is just so bassy and so rich and so complex and so nuanced that I think in 100% soy, it would just be a complete loss in translation moment. I really think so. So unfortunately, I don't know that we're gonna see it back unless and until um, Kringle changes their soy formula to include some paraffin, etc. Um, and they really had an amazing 100% paraffin formula. Of all the paraffin formulas out there that 100%, Crinkles was actually relatively clean. So I, but we're not gonna hijack the video with that. These are the only Kringle candles, I think, in my top 10. They're the top three. Um, they're my amazing early fall candles. And all three of them are, to my knowledge, discontinued. <laughs> for right now. 
Um, and again, we're not gonna hijack this video talking about all of Kringle's nonsense, but like they have definitely chosen quantity over quality the last couple of years. They've been throwing a whole lot of candles at us, none of which, well, at least very few of which, have had lasting power and, and no pun intended, strength and throw. You know what I mean? Um, none of them are really ones that I would like to see back with a couple very rare exceptions. And it's just a shame when there are amazing candles that even have come out in the last few years that are candles that could come out every single year and maybe should. Kringle used to have a solid back catalog on their website at all times that like you could order from. These were the tried and the true and like a core collection essentially. And I don't mind them not being available all season, but I do think some of these fall favorites should come out every single year. These are the three that I would definitely include. And I would just remarket Cherry Tree. Just remarket it as something else. All right, let's move on. We're moving to a different company now, and this is Voluspa. My um, fourth candle is Santiago Huckleberry, and I know I talk about this a lot, this candle. This is kind of my benchmark for deep, dark, jammy, musky, vaguely spicy kinds of profiles that I love for fall. I love across the board, frankly, but I especially love for fall. And I always mention Santiago Huckleberry, which is arguably my favorite of the bunch. Oh, it's so beautiful and it's so balanced. It has an amazing amount of musk and I think a little bit of spice. Maybe even some like vetiver in there, but then the brightness of the berry. It's a gorgeous, this, I don't, and I don't even know quite what huckleberries are. I assume that they're adjacent to blackberries and raspberries. And that's exactly what this smells like. It smells like a cross between blackberry and raspberry. And it's got the brightness of a raspberry, you know? Oh man, it's so beautiful. Um, so this is the traditional kind of embossed glass from Voluspa. And this candle, this fragrance has been in their collection for a long time. It's one of their core classics. Um, and I think it's a little bit of a sleeper. Everybody talks about like lavender, um, French, French lavender and Cade. And um, they also talk about Baltic Amber, for instance. Um, and Masu Bamboo. Um, this one has been out just as long and doesn't get as much love, frankly, and I think that it should. That said, Felispa's candles don't have great strength and throw, so if you're gonna try it out, I would definitely try it out in one of these tins, which is still very lovely. Um, and this has three wicks, it's very shallow. You're gonna get much more strength and throw from this. Honorable mention here, another candle which is very similar, and which has never performed for me, frankly, but if it did, would be neck and neck with it, is um, from Village Candle, Sugar Plum, which I think that they also repackage as like Forbidden Forest or something like that, um, is, or something about a fairy, maybe? A fairy, a fairy dust, a fairy something? No, it's not Forbidden Forest, it's, it's the fairy one. <laughs> Enchanted Fairy? I can't remember, but um, same fragrance. And it is another very deep, dark, jammy, plum forward berry with the musk, with the little bit of spice, just a fantastic fragrance, very much in this category. The ones that I've burned from them, I did not like the way that they came across. And actually it was getting a very strong like paraffin smell from them, which is not good. I'm a huge paraffin fan, but you should not be able to smell the paraffin over, especially a fragrance like that. It's just, it's a no for me. It tells me that they're using a very bad or cheap paraffin formula as opposed to the one that Kringle was using. But there you go. I think, again, that this category is a little underrepresented in home fragrance for the fall. Everybody's fixated on apples and pumpkins, 
What we're not getting as much from a lot of companies are these other like kinds of, especially stone fruits that really travel very well into the cooler weather and match up or blend fantastically with darker musks and spices. I would like to see much more of this from a lot of different companies. Um, but for me, Santiago Huckleberry from Valespa is one of my favorites. Okay, let's move forward. Before we get to the pumpkins, we have one more that is not a pumpkin, okay? And that is this one right here. We are with Homeworks. So this is my, wait, one, two, three, four. This is my fifth can, fifth, five, fifth out of 10. Patchouli Teakwood, and this is a fairly recent candle. I wanna say that this came out, was it last year? Did it come out last year? Oh my gosh, I think it did. Again, a sleeper. This was a very obscure candle that didn't get a whole lot of love. Um, and really, I only, like, there's only one brand ambassador who reviewed it, and this brand ambassador, it's not this person's wheelhouse, you know, they said they didn't like it, and I, I can understand that, you know, but nobody else really got it or burned it, and I think it is fantastic. I burned it all the way last fall and loved it so much that I bought a backup. And I think maybe I need to buy, maybe I bought two backups. <laughs> I didn't see it this year. And I just really hope that Harry Slatkin keeps making this candle because I adore this. In fact, thinking about this collection and about what fall candles I would put in a hall of fame, this was literally, literally the first candle that I thought of that immediately came to my mind. It was like, I just want patchouli and teak wood. You know, before I even thought of pumpkin candles, I just wanted patchouli teak wood. So patchouli teak wood, the notes on it are patchouli, cedar teak wood, bourbon oak, and rich plum. And um, you really would not know it because you would assume from those notes, I mean, you've got oak and you've got teak wood and you've got cedar and you've got patchouli. You would kind of expect this to be a majorly wood candle reinforced by the fact that the photorealistic label here are um, the cross cuts of these um, warm wood, um, uh, what do you call them? Planks, right? Um, this candle to my nose is much more plum and booze. <laughs> and all of what I've been saying up to this point, oh man, I love that. That just sits right where I want it in the fall. And I don't know if anybody else has that same like taste craving or flavor craving, scent craving for the fall season. But for me, again, a deep stone fruit with some rich ambered like booze. Done. I mean, it's just fall for me. It's fall. That is a fall that I want to get behind. And it is a little bit of a change in pace from the usual pumpkin spices and apples. And to me, this is just more mature, it's more unexpected, and it's more like less obviously seasonal, but yet also very seasonal. So this candle, it is booze central. This is one of the booziest candles from Harry Slatkin that I have ever smelled. I'm not kidding you. And he tends to like boozy candles. This one takes the cake. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, and it's like a young alcohol too. <laughs> like I don't think it's mellowed a whole lot. <laughs> it's just, whoa. But then the amber and the plum, oh, just anchor it and marry it, and again, it's got that brandy port kind of smell to it. I mean, this one is just overt. I'm getting those nuances from Cherry Tree from Kringle, but this one is just straight up brandy, sherry, port. I mean, it says bourbon, bourbon oak. And then yes, you are getting this amazing wood underneath, and the whole thing gives you this experience of like a craft, aperitif or alcohol, like a brandy or a port that's being distilled um, in these oak barrels. 
and you're just smelling the entire experience. The wood, the booze, the 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 fruit, the 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 amber like richness. And it's 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 got the young alcohol that's like really up there kind of in your face. But then it also has the mature aspect of the alcohol that is just so deep and warm. Like you can feel it kind of like going down your throat, you know, when it like lights your throat on fire when you're, you know, tasting a certain kind of alcoholic beverage. Wow, this is an amazing candle. It's an experience. I I I couldn't wait to come home every day and burn this candle. And it performed for me quite well. In the open concept, again, it was at least a seven, if not a 7.5. So for me, it was fantastic. It just really was. I've got a backup of it and I want to burn this every single year. I told you that I wasn't like listing these in order of like my absolute favorites, but between us, if I was, this would be number one. Number one, maybe number two, maybe number two, maybe number two, maybe number two. Like it's even like better for me than sanctuary. And you know I love sanctuary and hallowed ground. <sighs> okay, I love this candle. If you didn't experience it, um, I really wish for you to, and I hope that Harry brings it back. I really do. That said, I, I will be honest, I don't think it's for everyone. So there you go. It's for me though, it's for me. Give it to me. <laughs> All right, we have, oh, by the way, I have a couple honorable mentions in this category too, and they're both from Homeworks. In the same genre here that I think you could absolutely do for fall, um, that are very special candles to me, are also from Homeworks Black Tie. Um, and Black Tie has this amazing, smoky, vaguely boozy, tonka, musk kind of candle. It's fantastic. And even there are times when I burn it and I feel like I'm almost getting a coffee overtone to it too. It's fantastic. And you could 100% also burn this one in the fall. Black Tie, I believe he marketed as a New Year's fragrance at one point. And I have always burned it in kind of the January period because there is something super cozy about it at the same time. And for me, I do love those woody, like cozy, especially like half gourmandy kind of fragrances in the January period. So spoiler alert, this one is actually in my um, winter hall of fame, but given the profile, you could absolutely burn it in the fall as well. So I just wanted to say that in the same category and the same breath, Birchwood Vanilla from Homeworks is another one that frankly would be in my winter hall of fame. So stay tuned but you could absolutely burn this in the fall as well. This has a very, again, honeyed, syrupy, almost maple kind of smell to it with a lot of musk and a lot of amazing birch wood. Um, so given all of that, if your friend, if your, if your fall um, taste or scent profile fragrances lean more in the maple syrup kind of realm with more of a rugged log cabin. If you like those in the fall as opposed to January or February, then this would definitely, I, I would encourage you to put this in your top 10. This one and black tie, but if you had to choose one, definitely um, birchwood vanilla. Like I said, for me, these are both ones that I will include in my winter hall of fame because I tend to burn them in January and February. Um, so I did not include them in this fall rotation. All right, we've reached the point of the video where we only have, well, we, we've got five left. <laughs> We're only halfway through, actually. Um, halfway through, and we've got pumpkins. We've got pumpkins all the way out now, all right? So we're gonna start with the lightest pumpkin, which for me um, is Bath & Body Works Pumpkin Carving. And I know this one is marketed as a late 
deep October kind of candle for the Halloween season, or at least it has been within the last few years. Um, I believe this is also a repackage of what originally was called Pumpkin Patch. I think it was just Pumpkin Patch. Um, and for that, I think it was marketed maybe earlier in the season and not as a Halloween fragrance. For me personally, I think that it is more of a pumpkin patch than a pumpkin carving. There is something very bright and light and authentic about the actual like pulp of the pumpkin that for me makes it an earlier rather than a later fall pumpkin um, because it really just showcases I think the lighterness of like the pumpkin squash itself and so for me is much more of a harvest an early harvest candle rather than like a deep dark smoky or patchouli-ish or musky kind of deep October slash Halloween vibe. So for me, I would kind of like to see it go back to pumpkin patch, but I've become used to the pumpkin carving symbolism and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this was the packaging I think from last year and is one of the nicest and coolest Halloween pumpkin carving um, packages that I have ever seen. I think it's just so gorgeous. Look at that, look at that. Oh my gosh, I will keep it forever because I just think it's so fantastic. So fantastic, in fact, that I bought the companion like thing. Look at that raven. Look at this. This was like one of their cheap like $14.95 candle holders. And I don't even do candle holders, but I was like, yes, I need this candle holder because I just think that this stained glass motif was perfect. It was perfection. It was... I think that the packaging for this year is okay, but it definitely leaned more on the like sparkly, like Claire's side of things. A little bit too cutesy, a little bit, you know? Um, and then you can go like really super dark with the horror. Bath and Body Works generally doesn't do that, but this just sits right in between where it's like a little bit darker than just cutesy, but still like fun, you know? Um, I just, I can't speak highly enough of it. So you guys all know pumpkin carving, freshly carved pumpkin, spiced pumpkin seeds, and smooth brown sugar. And again, for me, the real standout of this candle is this amazing, um, almost like mineral or ozone-y kind of smell. I must be coming from the quote unquote alleged pumpkin seeds, but it's this very like botanical squash smell and it sits higher in the range. And they've still added a good amount of brown sugar to anchor with some pumpkin spices, especially clove, frankly. Clove and ginger. So it's more clove and ginger than it is cinnamon, for instance. So they've definitely got some grounding there, but it's just that top note, that special authentic botanical squash smell that just makes it a step above a lot of other pumpkin spice candles, even from Bath and Body Works, but across the board. And like I said, for me, if I was going to burn an early pumpkin, um, candle, this would definitely be it. I think it's really gorgeous. Um, and it highlights an aspect of pumpkin spice that not a whole lot of other companies have been able to capture with as much success and panache as I think um, Bath & Body Works has. Um, spoiler alert, the last four are all Bath & Body Works. So it tells me that like they really have a corner on pumpkin. Um, they, they or at least for my money, Many of my favorite pumpkins, pumpkin or pumpkin spice candles are all from Bath & Body Works, which is really fantastic. Um, a couple of them though, or most of them, have come out relatively recently with the exception of pumpkin carving and one more that I'm gonna talk about. Um, Yankee Candle is not represented in this list and maybe I could save that from for the end, but I just, I can't think of any Yankee Candles that I would like burn forever and that are so remarkable. I have to be honest, when I was just exclusively a Yankee Candle girl, I did always buy a spiced pumpkin or a pumpkin apple for the season. So there were those two. 
I didn't even bother looking at other companies. So I can't say that I chose them because I thought they were the best, but they were the best for Yankee Candle. I have noticed significant alterations in spiced pumpkin and in pumpkin apple from Yankee over the last 10 years. Um, like so much so that like, I've always been a spiced pumpkin girl as opposed to a pumpkin apple girl. But then like five or six years ago, I was smelling them both in the store, probably like a Bed Bath & Beyond or something. And I was thinking to myself, maybe I'm more of a pumpkin apple girl. I never liked this fragrance more than spiced pumpkin, but I am not loving this spiced pumpkin. So I switched over to pumpkin apple for that year. But that just goes to show you that I think that there have been some major reformulations of those two over the last 10 years. And I just, I don't go to them. I don't recommend them anymore. You just never know what spice pumpkin or what pumpkin apple is gonna show up at Yankee. And Yankee's kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel right now. They need to get their shit together. That's why they're not included here. But even, I mean, now that I have experienced some of these pumpkin candles from Bath and Body Works, even in their best iteration, does spice pumpkin from Yankee or pumpkin apple from a Yankee, does it really best any of these? I don't know. I don't know. So, all right, close parentheses on that. So the next one that I would burn, and now we're getting more into October and late October, um, a deeper pumpkin candle is pumpkin bonfire. Um, this, this is the candle that I would put at number one, probably for me, um, but it competes with patchouli and teak wood. So patchouli and teak wood has my heart, but at the same time, I do think there is no other fall candle for me right now that I enjoy more and that I feel is, it just embraces all of the fall season the way that Pumpkin Bonfire does. Um, so pump, I, again, this one doesn't really need a whole lot of an introduction. You all know Pumpkin Bonfire. White pumpkin, a bundle of clove buds and glowing embers. It doesn't do justice to what it is that you're smelling here. Um, this is, I can smell the pumpkin in this candle. Um, it's not the bright, obvious kind of pumpkin of pumpkin carving, and it's competing with a lot of other things in this candle. But the fact that I can smell it at all, it tells me that it's a pretty robust pumpkin note that they've put in here. Therefore, I would not call it a white pumpkin because I just think that white pumpkins are a little bit more subtle. Um, either absolutely in their botanical element or at least as a fantasy note, anything with white in front of it tends to be a little bit more ameliorated, a little bit more creamy as opposed to sharp and pronounced. Um, and I'm smelling a good pumpkin here. This has an enormous amount of musk in it. I mean, it's just an enormous and a glorious smoke nuance a lot of spice, a lot of clove, but everything is just blended and balanced to perfection, perfection. Any one of these elements could really just kind of be like coming at you and in, especially in an individuated way, like you could just smell like pumpkin and spice and then smoke and then wood and then musk without it really like marrying together. And this fragrance just, all the elements love each other. <laughs> they really are. Like they're not trying to sing their note over everybody else. Like it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous conceptual, gorgeous, um, that is very pumpkin spice forward, but frankly has so much musk, wood, and smoke in it that it's really more of a conceptual than just a pumpkin spice candle. It's fantastic, it's glorious. Um, the performance on Pumpkin Bonfire has been a bit erratic, but that's also the case for pumpkin carving over the years as well. So, you know, nothing really new there. This iteration apparently doesn't work very well but I bought it because I really liked the aesthetic a lot. I thought it was really pretty and classy and neutral and yeah. So Pumpkin Bonfire, if I had to list them with a number one, it would be Pumpkin Bonfire. There's just no question. And then number two for me would be this new patchouli teakwood. So there you go. Um, no surprises there. And I suspect the Pumpkin Bonfire would be on a lot of your top tens, 
probably pumpkin carving as well. So we're definitely in familiar territory here. Um, so now we're in deep, deep October and I don't really have a whole lot of Halloween candles here because um, I, 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 I. Um, I have come to the conclusion that I'm not really a Halloween person. <laughs> I don't grudge anyone this season and I, I watch with great interest what all the companies do for Halloween, especially Kringle. I'm a huge fan, 1000%. Um, but I just don't know that it's like my wheelhouse. And for me, like when it gets really gross, I just don't enjoy those fragrances very much. Um, and I don't decorate for Halloween. And so there aren't really any enormously Halloween candles in this list. This is the closest to it. It's a relatively new candle from Bath & Body Works, and I think it would probably be on many of your top 10 list actually, which is fairly impressive. This is Spiced Pumpkin and Patchouli, which came out in this Neutrals collection, again, about two years ago, maybe. Um, and this is fantastic. This year it was, I think, repackaged as like farmhouse pumpkin spice or something like that. I don't know, I can't remember. I don't know why they had to do that when I, I think it's perfectly acceptable for it just to come out under its usual name, Spice Pumpkin and Patchouli. Um, this is rich pumpkin, warm patchouli, and a touch of cinnamon sugar. And yeah, it's all of that. It's all of that. It's a lot of patchouli, but it's, it's again, as with Pumpkin Bonfire, it is blended perfectly with the higher and sweeter elements. So that it really, even if you're not a patchouli person, this is a candle you might be able to get behind. It's not super bassy. It's definitely not like dirty or damp. It's, but it's, it's, it's a recognizable patchouli. I would not necessarily say that it's like a high feminine perfume oil kind of patchouli either. It's a dark recognizable patchouli and it's blended perfectly with some of those darker pumpkin spices leading up into the pumpkin. This pumpkin has a little bit of a pumpkin carving vibe to it off the top. It's not quite as loud as in pumpkin carving, but you are kind of, again, getting that like mineral ozone pumpkin seed pumpkin squash flesh kind of smell to it which is brightening and lightening what otherwise is a fairly basic candle so again you've got a great range on this candle and has performed pretty well in the two years that it's been out um, if I needed a patchouli candle for around the holiday season I would definitely reach for this um, now we have I think the most quintessentially um, uh, pumpkin, the most quintessential pumpkin spice candle for me. Um, this is the most basic, the most pure, no smoke, no patchouli, no musk, just a straight up pumpkin spice. And that is for me, um, pumpkin vanilla cream. Um, and this is another like repackage. I believe this was pumpkin pie for a long time at, um, uh, Bath and Body Works, and then they repackaged it as pumpkin vanilla cream, I wanna say maybe six years ago, seven years ago, something like that. Um, and I've always liked this one, and in their fleet of pumpkin candles, especially before pumpkin bonfire and spiced pumpkin patchouli, this was for me the most authentic, pure, and also deep, rich, roasty, pumpkin spice kind of fragrance without nonsense without a runaway cinnamon note or whatever else um, this is creamy pumpkin vanilla cream fresh ground nutmeg and graham cracker crust um, it's very ginger forward it's got a good amount of that ginger that graham crass, uh, crust which usually would be off-putting to me because I'm not really a gourmand person, but the gram just works really perfectly with the pumpkin. And again, blends so effortlessly into it that you're not just like immediately smelling crust in terms of a candle. Um, you're really smelling pumpkin spice first with kind of like a gram influence to it. Um, like I said, fair, a good amount of ginger, um, but the spice, nothing overwhelms anything in this candle. I mean, it's just a great pumpkin spice candle. It really is. And I can understand why it was marketed as pumpkin pie. 
It's a classic, classic pumpkin spice. As I was smelling this, when I brought it out of, you know, my collection to talk about, by the way, I remember this in a really bright, almost neon orange package from like five years ago, which I kind of liked actually. <laughs> like a, a vetiver, what was that candle? Like vetiver glow or something like, like, it was like that kind of orange color. Do you remember that? Um, I was smelling this a few minutes ago and I thought to myself, you know what this smells like? And this is very last but not least. Oh, but I really do think that it's become a fall staple for me. Cozy Sunday night, folks. Cozy Sunday night. This is fantastic. It's a fantastic candle. It's very recent. Came out last year for the very first time. And it's a great candle. I would want to burn it every fall. It's on the list. It is actually, and this is where we get to the redundancy, it is actually very similar to pumpkin vanilla cream. Um, because when I was smelling pumpkin vanilla cream, it's the graham note. It's the graham note with the spices and the deep pumpkin with some ginger notes on top. And I smelled it and I'm like, cozy Sunday night. From the very beginning, I have insisted that there is a graham overtone to this cozy Sunday night. It's not as overt as in pumpkin vanilla cream, but it's there. There's a cedar note as well, a cedar and a graham note, and then a very ginger forward pumpkin spice and maybe a little bit, uh, just a tiny bit of that pumpkin carving brightness, just a tiny bit, not quite as much as in spiced pumpkin patchouli, but it's kind of there. And it's very, when you smell them back to back, they're actually really um, similar. So much so that if I included another candle here in my top 10, I would drop one of these. And frankly, if I had to drop one, I would drop pumpkin vanilla cream because I just think that this one is a little bit more special, a little bit more rich, a little bit more unexpected with that cedar note on the bottom. I think it has more range than pumpkin vanilla cream. It's also a little bit less sweet, which for me is great. I tend to not love super sweet candles. This is definitely a dessert candle, whereas this one is more of a like pumpkin spice, pumpkin pie conceptual with that cedar note, with a lot of ginger and with that bright kind of moment on top, it's just more than pumpkin vanilla cream. And for that reason, I actually like it a little bit better. So in future iterations, I kind of expect that I'm gonna drop pumpkin vanilla cream, but I think at least for this first iteration, it's good for me to mention it because for years it has been, you know, the best pumpkin spice candle that I know of and from Bath and Body Works before these recent additions of Spice Pumpkin Patchouli, Cozy Sunday Night, Pumpkin Bonfire, we basically had pumpkin carving and pumpkin vanilla cream a la pumpkin pie. Um, and those were their best, those were their best. And so I feel as though something needs to be said on both of their behalf. If I had to go forward, I would keep pumpkin carving in the top 10 and drop pumpkin vanilla cream, especially now that we have Cozy Sunday Night. So there you go. Um, honorable mentions in terms of pumpkin spice candles. Actually, weirdly, if I didn't have any of these pumpkin candles from Bath and Body Works, this is a fantastic pumpkin spice. This is from Times, and Times is the company that does the very famous Fraser Fir candle. For me, this is their second best candle, which is Heirloom Pumpkin. It's a fantastic pumpkin spice. Oh, I can never get this lid off though. I'll smell it from here. Oh yeah, this is great. This has a lot of ginger in it. Very ginger forward. And it almost sparkles a little bit, but then it's got a lot of deep, basey spices, pumpkin, and perhaps even a little bit of musk. This is a fantastic pumpkin spice candle. And whenever I've burned it, even in a very small size, it had great performance. So um, I would, if I didn't have those others from Bath and Body Works, I would say that one and then, it's very expensive. This is the other end of the continuum. This is least expensive. Um, actually, I think this candle deserves an honorable mention too. This is from Tuscany. I bought this last year at a grocery store, Possessed Pumpkin. This was a fantastic pumpkin spice candle. So much so that when it went on clearance, I bought another one. It performed fantastic. It was like in the seven and a half, eight range. 
It also looked really beautiful in this packaging because this was luminary. So these like lit up and some of the stitches here on the side lit up. It was a really pretty burning. And it's just a great pumpkin spice candle. Basey, musky, spicy, gingery, very much in the same category as Times from Heirloom. Maybe not quite as rich, but very similar to that. Yeah, it was fantastic. I would, I, I haven't seen it from Tuscany this year, but I just think it's amazing. Possessed Pumpkin from Tuscany. So that gets an honorable mention. That's it, friends. That's the 10. Um, so what is missing is, of course, Yankee Candle, but we just talked about that. For me, I think the major hole here is no apple candles. <laughs> I don't have apple candles. And I, I've come to the conclusion that I actually don't love apple in home fragrance. Um, I'm open to there being an apple candle in this collection, but I can't, I literally cannot think of any that I would put in the Hall of Fame, none. The two that I have kind of liked this season, actually, I did kind of like the um, Radiant Red Maple from Bath and Body Works. And I'm burning one from Kringle right now, which is, I, it's, um, apple and oud or red apple and oud or something like that and I'm really liking that one too but both of them perform the same which is to say they had no strength and throw like none um so I actually kind of like those they're similar fragrances in that they're more like apple conceptuals and I like that that seems to work for me especially if it has like a wood note in it or something like that so I, I do think there should be apple in here, but maybe my tastes just don't lean in that direction. So I know a lot of you, if you've got a top 10, that would be in your some, maybe more than one apple fragrance. I suspect several apple fragrances. That's not here. Another little hole is I think like a, a straight up like bonfire or wood embers, wood fire kind of candle, I think, which would be great for this season. Um, and I don't have one of those, but I will say that I am testing them right now. So there's like charcoal from Nest. There is a great one called Woodfire from Illume. And there are a lot of other companies that have done candles like that. Of course, Bath and Body Works has like Woodfire too, and then something else. Um, so I'm still in the testing phase of those, and I'm not ready to say that I like any of them enough to put it in a top 10. So. Stay tuned for other years and other iterations. And then last but not least, another thing that's not represented here is some Bath & Body Works favorites that I know many of you are probably like screaming at the camera right now, like screaming at your phone being like, where is leaves? Where is autumn, you know? Um, so there are a lot of like Bath & Body Works favorites like those, sweater weather, whatever, that are just like classics. And frankly, I do enjoy, you know, come out every single season. I just don't like them enough to actually burn them myself. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't burn them myself and uh, as much as I appreciate them and respect them for what they are, they're just not really my vibe in my house. It's kind of like like Christmas lights. Like I would miss it if like other people didn't put them up. <laughs> but I love that for all of you. <laughs> so keep doing that. Honestly, if leaves and autumn and sweater weather didn't come out, I'd be like, what's going on? Why aren't these candles coming out? But I actually don't bring them home. <laughs> so I just love all of them for you. Um, and I appreciate that they're here. And as I've implied throughout, I would like to see a deeper range for fall candles. And so even though it's not my special fragrance or vibe for my house, I appreciate the fact that that is an autumn vibe that exists and that just richens and, and, and broadens the repertoire of the fall, you know, um, and gives us all of those amazing options. Obviously, you're gonna gravitate one way or another as it's been obvious throughout. I gravitate in a boozy direction. I like my stone fruits. You know, there's some things in here that like other people are not gonna love and are not gonna want at any time, let alone in the fall. So there is that, you know, but for me, these are the candles. If, if I didn't have to burn, if I couldn't burn any new candles, 
I would be super happy with these. So there you go. Um, I hope this was enjoyable and fun, even if you like didn't agree with all of them or wouldn't put them in your collection. If you've got the bandwidth, tell me down below what your top 10 is, you know, or top five or something like that, you know? Um, you don't have to, but I know that many of you feel a certain kind of way about home fragrance and probably what is gonna be difficult for you is narrowing it down to 10 or to five or whatever. And I just would love to know what everybody loves. I suspect it'll be radically different, although I, I think that there are probably gonna be some candles that are just represented on everyone's. And I suspect they're the Bath & Body Works ones, to be honest, pumpkin carving, maybe pumpkin vanilla cream, but I think even at this point, pumpkin bonfire has started to become kind of the marquee fragrance for Bath & Body Works in the fall. And I really hope that they continue to treat it as their marquee fragrance because I think it is very, very special. If I had to rank them, it would probably be number one for me. Thanks so much for joining me in this special video. I felt kind of cranky this morning and now I just feel lit up with joy and like my heart is full, my heart is full, you know? And isn't that amazing that Home Fragrance can do that for us? And sometimes we just need to kind of pause and take a mountaintop moment. Like when we're overwhelmed with so many new things that often feels like quantity over quality and just take a pause and think about the things that you would retreat back to that have like low key changed your life, frankly, for the better. And um, it puts you in a certain kind of space. And yeah, I just really wanna celebrate that. And I think we all should take time to do that as well in whatever way we can. Thank you so much. Um, so this week I do have a couple Halloween-ish candles that I'm gonna review from Kringle before Halloween. And honestly, it's the end of October. So we're gonna do October empties. And then I think we're gonna start coffee week up. So that's what we've got. Stay tuned um, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.